why have we not heard directly from uh, the president about uh, these protests that have uh, taken over institutions of higher learning across the country? And respectfully, he didn't quite answer it. Uh, the question was, why hasn't the president been more forceful in talking yeah. about the protest? You mentioned that the president has taken questions on this. Again, respectfully, he, he hasn't. Let's talk about President Biden. He did just moments ago finally say something about these protests that we've all been watching for the last couple of weeks. Why suddenly is he saying it? Well, let's begin with yesterday. We'll get to what Biden said in a minute. It was pathetic. But let's start with yesterday at the press briefing, because something happened that very rarely happens. Members of the media, reporters not named Peter Ducey actually asked tough questions, actually asked follow-ups to questions, actually demanded that Karine Jean-Pierre stop ignoring the question that that guy asked, and then this guy asked the same question, saying stop avoiding the question. You know, what they used to do during Trump press conferences all the time. Well, finally, for the first time that I can remember, they're doing it to Biden. Watch. There's been some dramatic uh, images uh really across the country over the last 24, 48 hours, especially at the Columbia UCLA last night, University of Madison, Wisconsin, um, other campuses. Um, has the president been monitoring this? And why have we not heard directly from uh, the president about uh, these protests that have uh, taken over institutions of higher learning across the country, the police responses, uh, instances of violence? Why have we not heard directly from the president? So uh, just a, a couple of things. The president is, is being kept regularly updated on, on what's happening. Uh, as you just stated, across the country. He is monitoring the situation closely, so is his team. Uh, and I would just add that no president, no president has spoken more forcefully uh, about combating anti-Semitism than this president. Let's not forget in 2017, he was very clear what we saw, the anti-Semitic vile that we saw in Charlottesville on the streets of Charlottesville. He called that out, he called that out. And one of the reasons he stepped into the 2020 election is because of what he saw, is because he wanted to uh, he wanted to speak out and speak against uh, what we were seeing in this country at that time. Uh, democracy was under attack. Our freedoms were, were, were under attack. And we're still fighting for that uh, today, obviously. But it, he hasn't just done that by speaking. As you heard from my topper, he's taken action. He's taken action by moving forward with the first ever U.S. national strategy to counter anti-Semitism. More than 100 uh, new actions uh, have, were introduced, uh, obviously, in that strategy. And that is how seriously this president takes it. Uh, and I think what's important here is that he's taken action on this issue. Well, of course, he hasn't taken action on this issue. But of course, he immediately raises Charlottesville. Uh, let's be clear here. First of all, if anyone asks anything about Charlottesville, what's your memory of the process, Charlottesville, they don't immediately jump to anti-Semitism like we're seeing on college campuses right now, like vile, you know, uh, death to Israel, death to the Jews, keeping Jewish students from being able to attend class or even walk across the uh, quad of a college. No, we didn't say anything like that in Charlottesville. If you think about Charlottesville, you think about, uh, I guess you'll think about the negative parts of it was about white nationalism. It was about the Confederate statue of Robert E. Lee, right? Not anti-Semitism. It had to do with Civil War stuff and, and race relations. So, so first of all, that immediately is a non sequitur. When Biden said he was going to run because of Charlottesville, he didn't really mention anti-Semitism. He mentioned race relations. He was basically lying about Charlottesville to further divide this nation over race so that he can accuse his political opponents of being racist. That's what he did. And of course, he hasn't said anything, anything in any way whatsoever about the protests that we're seeing right now that can be equated to what he's done. You, you mentioned anything. The fact that she just brought up Charlottesville shows you that there. Oh, the second you mention anything in this country that has to do with hate or racism, Charlottesville, 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 that's all they want to talk about. But you say, well, what about Columbia University? What about UCLA? What about this? Uh, la, 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 la. That's the statement that they do. But see, the reporter wasn't having any of it. This is what changed yesterday. Suddenly, the reporter said, no, 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 we're not going to let you get away with that. Thanks, Corrine. Um, I wanted to follow up on a previous question I was asked, and respectfully, you didn't quite answer it. Uh, the question was, why hasn't the president been more forceful in talking yeah. about the protests? You yeah. talked about how he's talked about anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. Specifically on the protests, yeah. why hasn't the president been well, more forceful? No, forceful and I hear the question, Gabe, but respectfully, the president has been, one, the no other president has spoken about anti-Semitism 
than this president. You see what she did there. I mean, it's an immediate dodge. In fact, repeat exactly what the reporter just called her on. You know, you say that the president speaks out against anti-Semitism, but that's not the question. The question is about these protests, these people funded by major organizations with international ties who are supporting the Hamas terrorists in Gaza. It's these protests we're wondering about. That's the question. And she immediately says, no one has said more about anti-Semitism. By the way, I'm pretty sure other presidents have said more about anti-Semitism. In fact, I'm quite sure that other presidents have said more. This whole rhetorical, you know, hyperbolic, no one has ever said more. Please, no one can tell. Name me one quote that Joe Biden has said about anti-Semitism. One memorable thing that he's ever said about anti-Semitism. Exactly. I can't remember a damn thing that he said. No one's ever said more. Plenty. But that's not, that's not but, the question. It's the protest. And I'm, but I'm answering it in the way that I believe uh, is the best way to answer your question, which is the president <laughs> has been very, very clear. He's been clear about this. He's taken action. He put forth a, a strategic plan to deal, to counter anti-Semitism, more than 100 new actions. And not just taking actions, but his actions that across the administration. This is a whole of government process, right? We have the Department of Homeland uh, Security that's involved. We have the Department of Education that's involved. We want to make sure that we are dealing with this, not just words, not just speaking out, but taking action. She keeps saying this, you know, we're taking action. It's not that we're taking action over a hundred actions. And of course, the natural follow-up then is, hey, how are those actions working out? Because, you know, before Biden was president, before all these actions you've taken, to combat anti-Semitism, I don't remember these scenes on college campuses. I don't remember these things happening on the streets of our cities. So, I mean, you may brag about all the actions you take, but how about how effective they are? About whether they're working or not, or actually maybe whether they're making matters worse. Because, you know, this commission that he put together to combat anti-Semitism, you know who sits on that commission? Representatives of the Council for American Islamic Relations, CARE an organization who was actually during the Bush administration uh, tied to the 9-11 terrorist attacks and various anti-Semitic movements. So they're sitting on the board of the little committee that Biden put together to combat anti-Semitism. So maybe, just maybe, all these actions you're talking about aren't doing the trick because, I don't know, I turn on my TV, I see a whole lot of anti-Semitism, a lot more than I saw during the Trump administration or really for the last 30, 40 years in this country. But Karine Jean-Pierre continues here because she has to read the notes that were pre-approved by Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar. And so, uh, look, the president um, is going to continue to monitor this. Obviously, he's going to continue uh, to get regularly updated on this. Uh, we have spoken from this administration. You've heard from the vice president. You've heard from the second gentleman. You've also heard from this president who's taken questions on this. Uh, and what we uh, believe, and we're very clear on this, is that peacefully protesting within the law is something that every American should have the right to do. And we are also going to call out any type of anti-Semitism that we are hearing, that we are seeing, the hate. That's something that we've done, not just throughout this administration. This president has done that throughout his uh, his political career. And he's going to, we're going to certainly continue uh, to do that. Okay, so here's the problem. Uh, because I've already told, the, told you the punchline. About an hour ago, President Biden actually made statements. Now, yesterday, as she's deflecting all of these questions from the press, she says, we have made statements. He's made statements. He's taking questions. Questions shouted from like 100 feet away that he responds to off mic, right? And we'll show you that in a second. But the main party line yesterday from the White House and from this absolutely abysmal press secretary was, we're talking about it all the time, guys. What are you saying? But this person's spoken about it. We've spoken about it. They've spoken about it. Anytime we see anything, we speak about it. If that's true, then why didn't Biden make a statement today? What's the reason? Biden should have been able to just go off to Marine One on whatever little junket vacation that he's heading to and say, yeah, I got nothing to say because I've said plenty already. Didn't you hear what Karine Jean-Pierre said yesterday? We said plenty. But no, they had to say something today. So everything you're seeing from Karine Jean-Pierre here yesterday is a complete and total BS, right? And again, for the first time that I can remember, reporters are holding her feet to the fire on this and playing the whole tag team tandem thing. Because one reporter reminds her, hey, since you mentioned statements that he's made and you mentioned Charlottesville, 
Remember that thing Biden did say about 10 days ago about the protests? You mentioned that the president is taking questions on this. Again, respectfully, he he has. And he did take a question where he said he condemns those who don't understand what's going on with the Palestinians. I know you've been asked about that. But since you brought up Charlottesville, what do you say to those critics who say that he is trying to have it both ways, that he's um, essentially you know, trying to talk about both anti-Semitism and what's going on with the Palestinians? I would say to those critics is no, he's not doing a both sides uh, scenario here. When you think about Charlottesville, you think about the, the, the vile anti-Semitism that we heard on the streets of Charlottesville right here uh, in Virginia, right? Not far from here. The president and many of us wanted to make sure that was called out. Somebody died. A young woman lost her life. And when the president saw that, it put him in a situation or he believed it was the right thing to speak against that. He wrote an op-ed that was in the Atlantic because about that. About that. He decided to run because of what he saw in Charlottesville. And that was just vile, nasty rhetoric. And you had, uh, you know, former president talk about both sides. There was no both sides here. All right. So a couple of things that need to be explained here and fact check. Uh, first of all, this whole thing about, you know, it happened right here in Charlottesville, in Virginia, not far from here. OK, first of all, there are protests right now, anti-Semitic, anti-Israel, vile protests happening literally four blocks away from the White House right now at George Washington University. OK, and when you say right here in, and, and he said nothing about those, he says right here in, you know, right here in Virginia, in our backyard in Charlottesville. Charlottesville is a two and a half hour drive from Washington, D.C. You know what else is a two and a half hour drive from Washington, D.C.? New York City, where Columbia University is. If you head south from D.C., you drive two and a half hours, you'll hit Charlottesville. But if you head north from D.C. for two and a half hours, you'll be at Columbia. So this whole, well, it happened right here. That's why he had something to say about Charlottesville. New York is literally the same distance away from Washington, D.C. But then she says, we saw that vile, vile anti-Semitism, and we saw former president say there were good people on both sides. But Joe Biden's not doing that. He's not having it both ways. He didn't say both sides. Here's what Joe Biden said. This is exactly what that reporter was referring to. You judge. Condemn their anti-Semitic protests on college campuses. I condemn their anti-Semitic protests. That's why I've set up a program to deal with that. I also condemn those who don't understand what's going on with the Palestinians and their, how they're being used. The Columbia University- that is exactly Joe Biden saying both sides have a point. Actually, they're not even saying both sides have a point. He's not even mentioning the pro-Israel protesters. He's not even mentioning or acknowledging the victims, the targets of the vile, hateful, violent, illegal, anti-Semitic protests. He's ignoring them. In fact, the both siding that Joe Biden is doing is even worse than the lie that they said about Donald Trump. What Joe Biden is saying is, yeah, the the protests are anti-Semitic, and I don't like that. But at the same time, they're bringing attention. Those anti-Semites are bringing attention to an important cause. And you got to you got to understand where all the hate is coming from. That's what he's doing, which is frankly even worse because he's equivocating and rationalizing hate speech. On behalf of terrorists, by the way, this isn't even hate speech and and anti-Semitism, which is bad enough, but it's being perpetrated and, and screamed from the rooftops and illegally utilized in this occupation of the college campuses on behalf of the very people who just murdered 1,200 innocents seven months ago and continue to hold 200 innocent people, including Americans. So it's equivocation and rationalization on behalf of people who are supporting the enemies of this country and our allies. So she lied again, Free Jump here did, and, and we know she lied because we see the videotape. And then it came time for Peter Ducey. Some of these encampments, they had matching tents. We're being told that there are professional outside agitators involved. We don't know if they're being paid to sow chaos by domestic folks or foreign entities. Does President Biden want 
his administration to find out who is funding some of these protests? What I can say, I, I, you know, um, I cannot, uh, I cannot speak to uh, the organizations that are being reported that's on the ground. That is not something for me to speak to. Uh, that is obviously something that local governments. Uh, local officials, I keep saying local government, local officials are uh, going to uh, speak to. They'll have better information. Uh Hold up a minute. Uh, I'm going to let you finish. But number one, why can't you speak to it? Uh, if this, I assure you, if this was the Tea Party movement or a pro-Trump rally uh, or organization and there was some suggestion that was being funded by outside organizations or international organizations, she would speak to it. I assure you of that. But number two, this is not for local. The whole point of this is that this is going across state lines. The, the, these are funded protests who utilize the same tents, same tactics, same signs, same slogans, same organizations across state lines. That's not a local law enforcement issue. That is, by definition, a federal Justice Department investigation, especially if there's international money involved. So again, this is her brain either doesn't function properly or she's lying to you, or of course, as always, both is an option. On that, uh, what we have said, and I don't think I've iterated that yet from here, is that the DOJ and FBI is gonna continue to offer support uh, to universities and colleges uh, with in respect to federal laws. Uh, so that is something that the DOJ and FBI is doing. As far as uh, local organizations and what is all being reported on the ground. That is something that I'm uh, that local uh, law enforcement I'm um, certainly is looking into. And I understand that President Biden historically has spoken yeah. very forcefully about uh, anti-Semitism, but this week he's not. He's MIA. Is he that worried about losing the youth vote with these protesters? I'm going to be mindful. You're talking about youth vote. You're talking about 2024. No, Support no, no, no. Young people. I, I'm, I, I have to say what I have to say and just give me a second. Uh, so I'm not going to speak about somebody's doorbell. Is that a doorbell? Yeah, yeah. An, alarm. an alarm. Okay. All right. Um, and I'll, I'll speak more broadly. I can't speak to youth, be, youth and support and voters. That's not something I can do from here. Uh, the president uh, has taken a lot of policy actions here uh, that he knows that young people care about. And a lot of those actions are popular with those young folks, whether it's giving a little bit of breathing room with student debt relief. So we made an announcement today, matter of fact, and we are going to continue to do that because we think it's important as families or as an American and you coming out of college and you want to build a family, buy a home, uh, you have the opportunity to do that and not be crushed by student debt. The president understands how important it is to deal with that issue. So I'm not going to speak to the election or politics or support from the youth vote. That would be inappropriate. I don't work for the campaign. But I will say this. We're bribing the hell out of those kids. We're illegally going around the Constitution and we're throwing a ton of money at them to pay off the student loans that they're acquiring while they're sitting there in their own filth in a tent at Columbia screaming, kill the Jews. And they should be grateful for that. Boy, it's good to be Karine Jean-Pierre, and it's good to be the Biden White House. She goes on to talk about all the great stuff he's doing for climate change, too. But again, I don't want to get into politics here. That would be inappropriate. I don't want a Hatch Act violation or anything. The exchange goes on with Peter Ducey for a while, but I guess what I'm demonstrating for you here is that between Ducey, who absolutely, obviously, daily uh, holds her feet to the fire, but then you saw the other reporters for the first time in my memory actually following up, challenging, saying, and I love it, with respect, you're wrong. You're lying. You you didn't answer the question. You're dodging. I mean, they didn't use those words, but they might as well have. Well, that's what finally, I believe, led to this moment. Just about an hour ago, Joe Biden finally said something. And he said something because all morning long on every cable news station, it was an endless loop of live footage of California Highway Patrol dismantling the UCLA protests and arresting people. And, and all you had, they, you had those images with the television commentators talking through it. And even on MSNBC, even Al Sharpton said these protests are out of hand. It reached a point where Joe Biden felt clearly compelled 
to say something. They gave him a vitamin B12 shot. They boosted him up out there. They wrote something for him to say on the teleprompter that is eight feet tall. And this is the best they came up with. Before I head to North Carolina, I wanted to speak a few moments about what's going on on our college campus this year. But wait, but wait. I thought you've already said enough about this. I thought you've been talking about it every day. I thought, in fact, I thought no president in history has ever said as much as you've said about this issue. So why? Why now? Right? Isn't this going completely against what we just heard from Green Jean-Pierre? I want to say something. Haven't you already said something? Oh, clearly you haven't said anything. I'm sorry. I, I, I promise. I'll let him go longer than 10 seconds now. We've all seen the images. And they put to the test two fundamental American principles. Excuse me. <clears throat> the first is the right to free speech and for people to peacefully assemble and make their voices heard. The second is the rule of law. Both must be upheld. We are not an authoritarian nation where we silence people or squash dissent. The American people are heard. In fact, peaceful protest is in the best tradition of how Americans respond to consequential issues. We do not squash dissent in this country. That's a fascinating statement for Joe Biden to make. Can I quickly scroll all of the tweets that went out dissenting to the vaccine mandate? and the legitimacy of the federal government mandating the vaccine or putting the pressure on corporations to mandate the vaccine lest people lose their jobs. And the fact that the vaccine had a lot of mystery behind it and was something, can I, oh no, I can't show you all those tweets because the Biden administration pressured social media companies to censor that because it was dissent. Oh, we do not censor dissent. No, you do censor dissent. That's all you do. All right, now I'll let him finish. But, but, neither are we a lawless country. <clears throat> we are a civil society, and order must prevail. Throughout our history, we've often faced moments like this because we are a big, diverse, free-thinking, and freedom-loving nation. In moments like this, there are always those who rush in to score political points. But this isn't a moment for politics. It's a moment for clarity. So let me be clear. Peaceful protest in America... Violent protest is not protected. Peaceful protest is. It's against the law when violence occurs. Destroying property is not a peaceful protest. It's against the law. Vandalism, trespassing, breaking windows, shutting down campuses, forcing the cancellation of classes and graduations. None of this is a peaceful protest. Threatening people, intimidating people, instilling fear in people is not peaceful protest. It's against the law. Dissent is essential to democracy, but dissent must never lead to disorder or to denying the rights of others so students can finish the semester and their college education. Look, it's basically a matter of fairness. It's a matter of what's right. There's the right to protest, but not the right to cause chaos. People have the right to get an education, the right to get a degree, the right to walk across the campus safely without fear of being attacked. Let's be clear about this as well. There should be no place on any campus, no place in America, for anti-Semitism or threats of violence against Jewish students. There is no place for hate speech or violence of any kind, whether it's anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, or discrimination against Arab Americans or Palestinian Americans. It's simply wrong. There's no place for racism in America. It's all wrong. It's un-American. I understand people have strong feelings and deep convictions. In America, we respect the right and protect the right for them to express that. But it doesn't mean anything goes. It needs to be done without violence, without destruction, without hate, and within the law. You know, make no mistake. As president, I will always defend free speech. And I will always be just as strong as standing up for the rule of law. That's my responsibility to you, the American people, my obligation to the Constitution. Thank you very much. All right. So a couple things here. Uh, first of all, he says all of this after the police move in at the UCLA campus and get the job done. He says all of this after the NYPD cleans up shop 
at Columbia University. He says this after the governors in the states of Florida and Texas and Georgia and Virginia actually took care of business and, and arrested people for breaking the law on the college campuses. He's not leading here. He waits for all of these governors and all of these police forces to actually do the dirty work without any support, without him having their back, without him actually saying, this is outrageous, this is lawlessness, order must be restored. He's silent for over 10 days and lets all the dirty work happen. And then he comes riding in on his white horse afterwards saying, this must not stand. These protests, they're already over, dude. Everybody else made the tough decisions without you. But see, there's one big part of his statement that he left out. As much as I respect them, my colleagues, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ilhan Omar and Nancy Pelosi and all of the other Democrat elected officials who have thrown support to these anti-Semitic lawless protesters who I just denounced, they're wrong. And I defy them. They should shut up, you know, whatever. But he can't, see. He can't defy his power base in the Democratic Party. That's why he hasn't said anything. He's terrified. By the way, could we also have a word of criticism from the president here about all of the university presidents and faculty members who enabled this and supported it and allowed it to happen? Could he maybe go out on a limb and say the president of Columbia University should step down and resign? And all of the teachers who were who were making a human chain around these dirtbag, violent, lawless anti-Semites, they need to be disciplined too because higher education is a mess? No, he won't say that. He takes the low-hanging fruit, says the bare minimum that he has to say that is basically logic that every human being in this country believes, unless you've got an advanced degree, work at a university, or are part of the Democratic National Committee apparatus. And he just basically follows up after all the hard work has been done. This is not leadership. This is not what a president does. And by the way, does anybody, anybody actually believe two things? Number one, that he actually believes what he just said. Or number two, that he even knows what the hell is going on on these college campuses in the first place. Anyone? I didn't think so.